I just finished a book and I want to say that it should be required reading for anyone that likes to give their opinion. This book is called Factfulness by Hans Rosling, who is a Swedish physician. The subtitle is 10 Reasons We Are Wrong About the World and Why Things Are Getting Better Than You Think. I had heard excerpts from this book but this is an example of excerpts do not give it credit. So I'm gonna do a little review here, but I highly recommend this book for anyone that wants to offer an opinion. I came up with an alternative subtitle, which is 10 instincts that sabotage our critical thinking and create conflict. I am Karen Valencic and actually conflict and collaboration is my field. I'm the author and founder of Spiral Impact the power to get it done with grace. As I was looking through this book, I thought, yeah, if everybody paid attention to these 10 instincts that he outlines, we would be so much better equipped to have engagement that's really positive. So a bit of background, Hans was a Swedish physician. He tells a lot of great stories in this book to illustrate his points. At the beginning of the book, he has 13 questions that are multiple choice that he has people answer and most people get them wrong. He traveled the world presenting this information to a lot of experts, a lot of people making big decisions in the world, and most of them didn't fare as well as when he tested chimpanzees. So it's a little humbling to look at what do we not know. I wanna just go through those 10 instincts that he outlines. So here we go. Instinct one, the gap. So we are wired to have a big gap between us and them, the developed world, the undeveloped world, the haves and the have-nots. When we look at things with a huge gap, we miss a big, big part of the story. So if we look at averages, again, those are really big ways to create huge gaps because there is always a probability and distribution curve. He creates a model in here that's fascinating where he looks at four different income levels around the world. And it makes for such an interesting dialogue. I'm not gonna go into those details here. You gotta read this book. Number two, instinct, negativity. You gotta keep in mind that good news is not news. So the things that you're reading are all bad news. And I know the world seems bad right now. There are a lot of good things happening, so you gotta look for them. And we also tend to look at our past with rose-tinted glasses. So keep that in mind when you are, again, expressing an opinion. Number three, we think of things in straight lines. For example, years ago when we looked at population growth, if we looked at that as a straight line of growth over time, we would never be able to be sustainable. But it's not a straight line. There are curved lines everywhere. And certainly when we look at systems and we look at how we're progressing, rarely is it a straight line. Fourth instinct is fear. I love this quote, he says, the image of a dangerous world has never been broadcast so effectively while the world is actually less violent and safer for most people. I, I love that. And also he talks about really our main three fears in the world, the human beings, are physical harm, captivity, and poison. It's pretty interesting. It's not just public speaking, I guess. I think that's, that's pretty fascinating. Then another piece of data that I think is really eye-opening is here in the United States, if you look at the first 20 years of this century, there were about 3,100 deaths due to terrorism. And we have a lot of fear around terrorism. If you look differently at that and consider in that same 20 years what we should be afraid of is alcohol because alcohol related deaths were 1.4 million people so we need to keep things in perspective number five is the size instinct we see numbers tossed around that seem awfully frightening an example that he gives in this book is that in 2016 there were 4.2 million infants that died sounds terrible. But if you compare that with years before, in 1950, there were 14.4 million babies, infants died. You always have to look at numbers compared to something else. Number six is generalization. 
that's when we take something that happens over here and we generalize it to a larger situation. He gives an example in the World Wars. They learned that if they took wounded soldiers and laid them on their, their bellies, they would be less likely to vomit and choke themselves. I'm sorry if that's gross, but it, it is kind of gross. But if they extrapolated that to infants and they advised parents to put their babies let them sleep on their bellies. Well, that ended up in a lot of infant deaths because an infant can't lift up its head if it can't breathe. So you can't make generalizations in one thing and transfer it to another. Number seven is the destiny instinct. This is where we believe that because things have been some specific way for a long time, that it will always be that way. He uses a lot of different examples in the book, but the two that struck me was that we make a conclusion based upon somebody's religion about how many children that they will have as a family. Not true. He also used the idea that Africa, we have a belief that Africa will always be destined to be a poor continent. It's not true. It's not true. Change takes a long time and sometimes our opinions, our viewpoints don't stay up with it when it takes a long time. So if you're going to spout out something about destiny, better check the current facts. Number eight, this actually I think is really an important thing, which is having a single perspective. We have a world of experts and experts will give you their perspective, which is their perspective based upon their expertise. A lot of our media outlets are single based perspectives. So you've really got to be careful with that. And I think we all know about that one. So if you're going to spout an opinion, be sure to clarify what your perspective is. Number nine is the blame instinct. The blame instinct looks for a bad guy to prove our beliefs. So he suggests look for causes, not villains. But blaming is a, a big instinct that really, again, filters what we see. The last one, number 10, is the urgency instinct. When people are crying wolf because it's the world is going to end tomorrow, we tend not to listen to them um, and we tend to discount their information, which is not a good thing. Those are the 10 instincts. And by the way, he does give us a warning around what we should be looking for and be worried about in the future. This book was published in 2018 and I'm really sad to report to you that Hans died in 2017. So this book he collaborated with, with his son and daughter-in-law that finished it and published it after he passed. I was really sad to hear that because I was looking forward to more information from him. What did he warn us about? Well, the number one thing was a global pandemic. That happened two years after this book was published. The other three things are financial collapse, World War III, and climate change. Things are getting better, but we still have some things we need to be paying attention to. That's all I've got this time. Thank you for listening in, and until the next time, thank you so very much. Bye-bye.